It's Mr. Thessalonian back here again. Today what I want to show you is something I'm going to nickname the Tromp Hammer. It's a mixture of two different devices. A water hammer, a water ram, which is a water powered water pump, and a Tromp, which is a water powered air compressor. By mixing the two together, we're going to end up getting something that produces a much higher compressed air value than the Tromp by itself. I noticed when messing around with the water ram that I was able to generate with very little head up to almost 60 PSI, which shouldn't have happened because of the amount of flow I had and the head I had. So the water ram effect was able to generate higher PSI than the Tromp design all by itself here. Let me go ahead now and walk you up and show you what's going on. First of all, from back here you can kind of see it. Water is going to come in at an uphill slope, so I'm going to have about 20 feet of head come into that angle you see right there from uphill, running down into that. That's going to be our flow into the system. It's going to run past this elbow, which I'll show you up close. That's where it's going to draw the air in. The Tromp design is right there at the elbow. It's going to flow down the pipe, carrying all those air bubbles with it, hit the bottom down there where the propane tank is, and the opening for the pipe in is slightly higher than the output pipe over on the other side here. So what's going to happen is, once again, water is going to flow in, grab air bubbles, go into the propane tank. It's going to have to spin around, get swirled together. It's going to release the compressed air that's in that water. The water is going to go down out of a pipe lower than the input, so the water is going to flow all the way up this pipe. When it gets to the top, it's going to start generating enough speed. Once it does, like the water ram, it's going to slap that one-way valve at the top up there closed and generate the water hammer effect inside the system. All the compressed air down here in the lower propane tank, when that happens, will get rammed up into this storage tank here. This tank will allow us to both read our pressure, obviously I got a pressure gauge here, and we've got a standard air compressor style fitting out of the top of the tank so we can put that air to anything we want to use it for. I've got a bigger tank that we can run off of this, put an air line to it, and store a lot of air. Maybe we can run that Tesla turbine like I said. So anyways, what's going to happen here folks is water's going to come in carrying air. Maybe you can see this, I can get the angle for you right. It's going to bring it in right about just below the center mark of the propane tank. The air itself is now going to get kind of dispersed. It's going to be released by the water slamming into the tank. All that air is going to rise up above the input here and get kind of stored right against this. And as the speed of the water goes by, it comes up the pipe here. And this one-way valve right here closes this direction, so flow would be this direction. So what you see the arrow would be flow and closes this direction just like the water ram. We're going to have this at least, to make a water ram work, this is going to have to be at least three feet lower than the head input on this side, wherever we're getting our water source from. Uh, so this will have to be at least three feet lower than that. We're going to end up burying this whole system in the end down in the ground. Cover that with some uh, rust inhibiting paint, bury that down in the ground so this will just be sticking out of the ground about right here. That'll be our overflow. We'll be able to generate our compressed air out of here. Now as water comes in from uphill, what you can see here is all our input straws. And I've got nine straws right here that are just hollow clear tubes. Let me pull the end. I put this on there just to demonstrate the downhill pipe. So you can see down in here, you can see all the tubes going through the holes. They're running quite a ways down the pipe. That way when the water flow comes by this, it's going to create a, a nice vacuum or a, a draw against those tubes, which will suck air into the tops right here and disperse that air as bubbles all the way down the pipe until it gets trapped down there in the Tromp uh, tank system. Real quick and take this off to show you how far down they all go. You could space them out a little more evenly, make it like a plate in there or something that held them out so the water flowed a lot more evenly around them. In fact, you could stagger the ends of them just slightly so they made kind of a, uh, a swirl, a whirlpool effect in the water itself as they went, the water went by in the air bubbles. Might make it more efficient. But that's a very simple thing you can do. In the end, I gotta glue these in. I just wanted to show you this before I glued them all together. These are the clear tubes that I'm using. Just able to draw just enough air and not take up too much room in here that it's going to end up clogging the pipe so we restrict our flow too much. We don't want to restrict the water flow going past this. You want to make sure there's enough water flow that in the end we can go out the smaller pipe. And here, if you notice, I've got a larger pipe in than I have out. This will allow for a large volume coming in from uphill. It'll grab a lot of air. I didn't want to grab the air too far uphill because of the fact that the water ram effect is going to stop that flow and probably let that air bubbles travel back up the stream if this, the air is being inputted too far up the pipe. This seems to be about the perfect length to allow the water flow to generate and start pulling air into the system, get the air down to the tank, and then the valve slams shut up here, jacking that air up into our upper cylinder. Once the upper cylinder is full of air and the pressure is greater in the cylinder, this one-way valve will go closed, capturing that air up in here, 
and making sure that nothing else from down here at a lower pressure can get back out of this upper tank once the water ram effect takes place, locking it into place. Because once the water ram opens back up, the pressure would be lower. And if you were able to build higher pressure in here than through the system itself each time, some of that pressure could blow water out and lose its gains. One of the added things at the end of this that we're going to do, once I get a couple more of these one-way valves, is up here at the top of this. Like I said, this will all be buried in the ground. Right here, I'm going to extend this out and put a full water ram right here. So we'll have another one of these tanks sitting off of a T right here going up. We'll put our water output here. We'll extend to another one-way valve, just like the water ram video. And that way we can get both compressed air and pumped water out of this system. Right now, I just wanted to check out how much pressure I can generate with the water ram effect incorporated into the Tromp design. In the end, we can use this as both designs at once where we can pump water and get compressed air out of this. Two forms of either energy output or a, a stored source of power or, or gardening use or whatever we want from this. Uh, the compressed air could do aquaponics. If you were into aquaponics, it could aerate your tanks. All right, so there it is running, folks. We're drawing air in through the straws. You can see how fast the cycle is happening here. We're building up air pressure through our Tromp hammer design. We've got the pipe running way uphill here. Not a lot of lift at the moment, but this is just a good test. Sorry for talking so loud. I'm by a river. It's very loud out here. Let's go ahead and look in on the uh, valve here. That is a very high velocity there. We're already building pressure in the system. You can see the tubes. If I get up close here, you can actually see the air bubbles inside the tubes. So you can see the little gurgling air bubbling action happening there. Every time the valve shuts, a little bubble pops back up. So our Tromp hammer is working, folks. And right now, if I come over to the air pressure gauge, well, it's very difficult to see that needle. It's bouncing so much from the vibration. So right now we're starting to get up in pressure. I just turned this on. So let's let it run for a moment and see how much air pressure we can actually build as our Tromp hammer starts working. All right, folks, so the Tromp hammer is hooked up. It's running away. What I'm gonna do here is zoom in a little bit right here on the top. I'm gonna take an air fitting there and see what kind of pressure we can get to blow out of that. All right, so I've got this air fitting here. It fits inside of our chuck and just has a hole out the top. Let me go ahead and hook that up. Immediately, you hear the difference in the trump here. It's still running, but not nearly at the same high pressure. And right now, I've got a sustained airflow coming out of our trump hammer right now. Let's put that back close. All right, so the velocity once again starts building back up on the uh, hammer valve. So right now, with maybe just the uh, head difference, you can look down the pipe here, folks, and notice the pipe actually droops lower than our input here for a moment. We barely have anything different in feed height than what you see right here. So just maybe three foot of pipe is giving us just below the 25 PSI marker right there. Let me zoom in so you can see the tip of that red needle. I don't know how well that shows up in there, folks. But we're starting to move up. Uh, zero's way down here at the bottom. We're just pushing underneath 25 PSI. And for three feet of pipe, three foot of head, two inches around, that's already higher than the uh, mass says it should be. For the velocity we can achieve, the amount of actual water that's sitting there as a tower, we're only supposed to be able to generate a 0.4 of a PSI per foot depth, uh, one square inch. So we've been able to overachieve the actual output seen from a standard tromp already, which is a really great sign. Now, if you notice here from the original film, I've shortened down the pipe on the end to bring it well down below here. When I brought it out here to test it out, the uh, output was really high. And with only that one inch of drop right now, I wasn't able to get the thing to function. We're going to extend that back out when we're done and bring it all the way back up to height so we can bury this in the ground. But I just wanted to bring it out, give it a good test right now. It's functioning as a tromp hammer. We're getting higher PSI than uh, what you should be able to get out of that much water inflow because you're really only adding into a very little water height on the outflow, really. So you got very little head height comparatively inside the tank. Almost all the pressure is being generated there from the valve shut. And we're getting really close here to 25 PSI. So if I bring this pipe 20 feet up in head, and drop it down into this, we're definitely going to push well over the 50 to 60 PSI range. The possibility to make this work even better, that we're going to want a larger output valve than our input pipe. 
and that way the valve can allow for a high volume flow to draw your air down the system before that valve shuts. Uh, so we're going to play around with that. Some of the things that I just want to throw in there today, folks, just to help you out with your designs if you want to play around with this. Until next time, this is Mr. Tesalonian.